Hello and welcome to the Messages and Methods Livecast Life 2.0 Livestream Podcast hosted by Encore Entrepreneurs, Shelley Carney and Toby Yunus. We inspire excitement for content creation and marketing your brand and business while answering all your technology and digital marketing questions. Join us as we interview experts who share their knowledge and experience to provide actionable tips to land more clients, nurture leads, and position yourself as an expert in your industry. Chat with Shelly and Toby every Wednesday on YouTube or Facebook. Hello and welcome to Messages and Methods. I'm your host, Shelly Carney. And, and I'm Shelly's co-host, Toby Yunus. Thanks for joining us today. You betcha. Uh, today we're going to be talking about having hair on your shoulder. You're going to be talking about uh, LinkedIn and how we can use LinkedIn in our digital marketing efforts. But first, we're going to tell you about something new that we just signed up for. It's called PodPage. And on PodPage, we can share all of our content in one place. Uh, so this shares our podcast with you, our messages and methods podcast, and uh, all the information that you might want to know, uh, where to find us, what we're about. And as you can see, uh, it, we have a little banner at the top that talks about our book. We have the the, the screen that tells you how to get to uh, episodes, videos, and uh, sign up as a guest even. You can even sign up as a guest on our show using this uh, I'm going to talk about that. So to get to the new uh, website with all our content, uh, go to livecast.life. That's livecast.life. And it is in the scroll down below. In addition to that, if you've uh, ever thought about becoming a guest uh, on our program, you can go to this button right here, register as a guest. I've already opened that page. It's livecast.life slash guests slash intake. And it's the new and kind of focal point for registering as a guest. Uh, and it has everything that we need to know about you becoming a guest on our show. Uh, so we're very grateful to Pod Page, Page to have put this new uh, application together because it makes it so easy uh, for us to, um, to take a look you know, see all our content in one specific location. Last but not least, I do want to remind you that our new book is available on Amazon. Um, it's called Women in Podcasting, and it's based on the interviews that Shelly and I conducted. I'm going to say Shelly conducted the interviews. I engineered the interviews at the uh, pod She Podcast Live 2021 in Scottsdale. Cocktail. Oh, yeah, since Scottsdale, Arizona. Scottsdale, October. Arizona. <laughs> uh, and you can get there by going to books.agkmedia.studio. And that, too, is listed in the scroll uh, down below. You can buy it in either, if you click on it, you can buy it either in a... How can you tell Windows did an update last night? You could buy it as a Kindle or a paperback. A paperback. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free. Okay. So that's... All I have for you, I'm going to turn it back over to Shelly. Let me close these windows. And we're going to get our guest in on the program. And there we are. I like this layout better. All right. Today's guest is Daniel Alphon. Is that is that correct? Yes, Shelly. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be a part of the Messages and Methods um, stream live stream. Thank you for being here. Uh, so, Daniel, we met on Podmatch. Uh, Podmatch is a place where people can sign up to be a guest or a host or both uh, for podcasting. And Daniel reached out to be on our show, and we were very excited to have him because he's a LinkedIn expert, and we felt he would be a perfect addition to our uh, series on digital marketing. So thank you, Daniel, for being here. And why don't you tell us about yourself and your business? Thank you very much, Shelley. Um, I signed up to LinkedIn early in uh, 2004, and I, I was looking for a playbook, and I couldn't find anything. So like other people, I built my own uh, playbook, and it's been a bumpy ride, but LinkedIn has grown by leaps and bounds, and it's a very powerful system that's underutilized by 
many people who are considering live streaming, podcasting, or writing a book. So we should mention Daniel lives in Israel. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And what city? I did. I should have asked, but I didn't. A small community just outside of Tel Aviv. It's called Gan Yavne. Mm, very nice. And the other thing I forgot to ask is, what time is it where you are right now? It's the best part of, of my day, speaking with you. <laughs> but it, but it's around 9, uh, sorry, 10, 10 p.m. Oh, well, that's not so bad. I I, was, <laughs> I, I didn't uh, look at the uh, time differences when I when we asked you to join us, and I should have. So uh, you have seen some of the shows that we've already done with other guests, and you know that the primary topic is digital marketing in 2022, but we want to cover as many facets of digital marketing uh, as we possibly can, and that's why the invitation to you as an expert in LinkedIn uh, is so important. And I'm going to let our audience know that we've asked Daniel to answer our questions in the context of his area of expertise, because we, like Daniel, believed LinkedIn is a very important part of where you want to be in terms of digital marketing, especially if you're a small or a, a home-based business uh, or a startup entrepreneur, you need to know how to use LinkedIn in terms of your digital marketing. So as I said, we've asked Daniel to answer these generic questions in the context of LinkedIn. And I'm sure he has other things to add as well uh, because of the amount of experience uh, that, um, that uh, he has. So Daniel, let's start with uh, the first question. What did you learn about digital marketing in the last 12 months? Thank you, uh, Toby. I would say this, in general terms, um, I have a, a, a friend who uh, uh, moves from country to country, homeschooling his uh, his child and, and working in, in China or, or Europe for eight months. And he's, he was used to, to uh, uh, providing services from home. But the, the rest of us have found it challenging to start working from home and no longer uh, see people in the, in the water cooler or coffee machine. Uh -huh. It, it has provided us with a lot of opportunities once we understood that COVID is, I don't, I don't want to say here to stay, but it's not a, a, a just a, a passing passing phase. In terms of, of LinkedIn, the uh, pace of, of the changes has increased. More and more people, more and more entrepreneurs had the time to use LinkedIn because commuting was uh, disappearing or at least significantly reduced and the average time users have logged in into LinkedIn has increased so more people join the platform since you uh, hit the uh, live session a hundred or 200 people have joined every second two people sign up that's an amazing number uh, when you think about it so uh, I, I wanted to go back to something that you said earlier you said that you had been a, and this is not in the line of question. I'll turn it over to Shelley in just a minute. You said you had been a LinkedIn um, subscriber since 2004. I had no idea it went back that far. I mean, I was familiar with the technology. Uh, how have you seen a change, a change in that period of time? There have been many uh, changes, but the, the essence, I think, is pretty similar to when it was launched. It's a, it's a conservative platform, it's traditional, it's slow, and above all, it's professional. Uh -huh. So our listeners here may have a number of, of uh, topics they're interested in. The, the first bit of advice I could suggest is to focus on one professional activity they would like to highlight. All right. That's good advice. Shelly, back to you. All right. Um, using your experience of the past, uh, let's say, 16, 17 years using LinkedIn and doing this digital marketing yourself, um, how do you feel that digital marketing for entrepreneurs and small business owners will change in the next 12 months? That's a, that's a powerful question. I, I think that in terms of, of Podcasting, podcasting is very big and, and live streaming is, is very big. And if I, I might say that good post podcasts are going to stay and are here to stay, but many people who have not done this seriously will at one point stop doing this. And if you are serious about it, then think about the long term. 
and building your 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 podcast and, and understanding the way you'd like to uh, um, grow your audience and be systematic systematic about it is an advice that's good perhaps both for podcasters and live streamers and also for LinkedIn. Consistency is key. So uh, let me, I'll get on to my other question, but not, Shelley has been very good about uh, making uh, blog post content uh, entries into her LinkedIn, and she's gotten a lot of response. I mean, a lot of people are now subscribing. How many did you say? I have about 260 some odd. Yeah, but that's better than zero versus oh, yeah. where I'm at. Yeah. Maybe that's not fair. <laughs> um, so she uses a lot of that, uh, a lot of the content that we have created in other places and adds it to LinkedIn and is getting a response to it. So I, I think what I like about LinkedIn the most is that it, although it's it's probably categorized as a social media platform, it doesn't behave like some of the other social media platforms. You don't hear a lot of criticism of LinkedIn like you do with other social media platforms. Why? What do you what do you think that is? What's that about? Why Why don't we see that <laughs> common social media criticism for LinkedIn? Um, a lot of the other social media platforms we use on a daily basis are based on our activity in that platform. So if you will, if you log into Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, then you're supposed to be active. On LinkedIn, you're not su supposed to be very active. The top action LinkedIn uh, users perform is visiting other people's profiles. So you need to build a decent profile, but you don't have to share yourself to death. It's not interesting. And most people will simply become blind to, to this. That, that does make it very different. So what do you see as the most prevalent optical, uh, obstacle to digital marketing success in the coming year? Um, a lot of SMB owners and, and entrepreneurs, uh, because they don't have a, a lot of time, are looking for shortcuts and, and fail to have a system. I, I believe in systems. Even if the system is imperfect, it makes it easier for us in the long term to grow our business, to get more listeners, to get more revenues. And many uh, excellent people I know are jumping from one tactic to, uh, to another, and they never stay enough or never uh, play with that enough to actually see the results. Again, the long term, it is is uh, stronger and, and more captivating than trying to just move to, to another fad for for a week and then discover something else. Mm. Shelly, uh, so to, to tell us a little bit more about the people you work with and um, what you do for them, what should a prospective client have in place in their business before you may best help them with digital marketing? Thank you very much, Shelley. The only thing um, that that will help us is knowing who their ideal client is. In other words, some of the people we try to help are too early in their uh, entrepreneurial journey to even understand who they want to serve. And to those people, I would say, forget about LinkedIn and try to focus, try to speak with people, try to experiment until you have a niche and you decide that's what, what I want to do. And that minute, then you can leverage LinkedIn in, in a much stronger way than trying to do something when you're not clear about your goal. If you are able to easily identify your ideal client, everything else is feasible, easy, and systematic. And that would be the, the, the only obstacle uh, preventing someone from working with me or any other uh, service provider. Uh, yeah, that's very true. So uh, we're very much about storytelling. We like telling our own stories. We like hearing our clients' stories. So do us a favor and tell us a story about a recent learning experience you had when dealing with one of your clients. Cool. Um, I had a, um, a Zoom call with uh, the owners and it's the staff of a company called Zago. They're manufacturers based out of Edison, New Jersey. And they played with the LinkedIn and, and, and they were looking for the engineers 
who would be uh, specking the, the RFPs and the, the contracts for them in, in aviation, in the medical device, and, and um, the military. And when, when they discovered that within minutes they could find prospects on LinkedIn, and by the next time they, would, they, they were able to reach out to them, it was sort of magical. It was almost like, you know, a, a visiting a, a candy store with your kid for the first time. It was almost overwhelming and, and it was fun to, for me to, uh, to see, like, like you guide someone who's uh, um, uh, just had the first st uh, live stream experience. You see their eyes shine. Uh -huh. it, makes us, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, it does. We we love that part of it when one of our clients does their first live stream and it was painless and uh, they got to express themselves and uh, they see the end results and they can share it with their business associates, their family and friends. So you're right. It's very exciting uh, for us to see uh, clients, you know, realize that they've done something different and important to them. Shelly? Uh, how does a website affect marketing success and how can you optimize a website to to achieve that success? Cool. Uh, in the long term, I think website is essential for our listeners here. There is no excuse for them not to create a website. And as much as I like LinkedIn, they don't own LinkedIn. We don't own LinkedIn. And the best use of LinkedIn would be either to reflect what we put on our website so live, livecast.live, the content there should be reflected on LinkedIn, on your presence, on your, on your profile, and on your page. If you're building a website and, and uh, you'll only have your website, you know, in six months, then consider, you may consider LinkedIn like another website of yours. It, it doesn't have to be the primary website, but another very important uh, thing uh, I'd like to suggest is that entrepreneurs who are thinking about publishing a book or start live streaming or podcasting should build their profile as a website on LinkedIn and not as a CV uh -huh. because they're not looking for, for a job. So it doesn't make sense just to say I was working for First National Bank till that year. Try to tell the story about yourself and who you serve in your new life, in, in, the, in the live streaming uh, uh, episode of, of your life. And that will make it, make it a lot more interesting. The challenge or what you, what you should consider is building a converting profile. You know, uh, I'm embarrassed to say that if you want to see an example of what <laughs> Daniel is talking about, uh, take a look at Shelly's profile on Instagram and then take a you look at LinkedIn. Uh, I'm sorry, LinkedIn. I keep saying Instagram. Shelly's profile on LinkedIn and then my profile on LinkedIn. And you'll see the difference because of the great job that she's done and turning it into her come on, kind of your well, personal yeah, but website. You're just kind of more a hobby kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> I am kind of guy. Okay. Daniel, how does, since we uh, talked a little bit about social media and your focus, as we know, is on LinkedIn, but generally speaking, how does social media figure into your total marketing success? Because people are on, on social, you need to have a social media strategy. And I don't believe you need to create a different uh, personality for the sake of social media. It doesn't make sense because some of the people who are going to watch whatever you do on LinkedIn or, or Instagram or any other system know you from real life. They've spoken with you. They've worked with you. They studied with you. And just understanding the way you'd like, there, there's maybe three um, tests. One test is that you should feel good about your social media activities the second test is will will your network be surprised or will they not and say yes that's the way shelly and toby are in real life and the third test and maybe the the one that's the harshest is the clientele you'd like to attract when they check you out on social will they say how do i get these people i need to speak with them they know what I'm talking about. And that is the exact time I'm thinking about creating the next chapter for me. How do I reach out to them as fast as possible? 
So first yourself, then your network, and lastly, people you'd like to serve who have never heard about you. So uh, before I turn it back over to Shelley, for those of you that are in chat, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or YouTube, if you have any questions, or LinkedIn, or, or LinkedIn <laughs> post them to the chat room. Why, why do you have to? Why do I have to keep reminding <laughs> myself of that? I shouldn't have to remind myself because you don't use it very much, and yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, so if you have any questions, there's a uh, chat box on the page that you're on. Ask your questions in there, and before Daniel leaves today, we'll make sure we get those questions to him. All right, Shelley, back to you. How can we use email marketing most effectively and how can we tie that into what we're doing on LinkedIn? It's an excellent question and I uh, wish I heard that question a decade ago because mm -hmm. I, I was late into email marketing. I started building a list maybe two years ago mm -hmm. and the best piece of advice I could give to our audience here is simply start as soon as possible. You can start with a quarterly email or a monthly email. Don't don't make yourself, don't push yourself too hard. Don't try to, to send, you know, a number of emails a week. It doesn't make sense. But if you can consistently have one email a quarter or one email a month, you will be able to grow your list. In, in another episode, uh, I heard it, you discussed the possibility of having a LinkedIn newsletter. Uh -huh. That's fine, but again, your own website and the uh, email list that you will own in the long term are more important than social and LinkedIn. Because in my book, LinkedIn should serve you rather than you serving LinkedIn. And do you have a suggestion for how to get uh, your LinkedIn contacts onto your email list? Content is, is uh, very big on LinkedIn. I would say that content is the, is the gasoline, the, the best marketing uh, elements that are likely to grow your business. And within the context of, of content, I would advise our listeners here to repurpose or produce educational content. Okay, the, the, there is one part that's uh, top of the funnel and getting uh, um, more people discover what, what it is that you do. And there's the sale process or prospecting. I don't think LinkedIn is, is uh, good for the transaction. But if you use it systematically, LinkedIn can make a lot more people curious about you. Go check you out. Go to livecast.live or... Uh, download the client attraction checklist or do anything that should there is likelier to convert them and make them a, a long term uh, client of yours. So let's keep up uh, that line of uh, conversation. Uh, in what ways are content creation and uh, distribution a major factor of success in digital marketing? I think it's key, Toby, um, because content is, you know, back in the day, the salespeople were, um, you, you were meeting salespeople because you were dependent on them to know what's happening outside in real life, like 20 uh -huh. years ago. Or, but right now, you are able to easily make 80% of your searching process before ever, ever speaking to the, the company you chose. Uh -huh. And that makes the client a lot more educated. And content is the best, just asking ourselves, identifying our ideal prospect, and then asking ourselves or interviewing them, what makes them tick? What bothers them? And can we write or produce or stream content around it, educational content that will make them join our tribe because they got value from it and when they get value from it you don't have to sell they simply buy we you already know as a result of you looking at our work that we're very big fans of content creation and distribution so we agree with you uh, wholeheartedly on that mm -hmm. back to you Shelley. is there uh let's just expand that question a little bit more is there a 
particular type of content or posting that you would recommend when it comes to LinkedIn? Excellent. Let me just throw a number of, of options and it should tie with your marketing objectives, uh, of course. Um, you can create content that LinkedIn calls LinkedIn articles. That would be best for long form content, content that has a long shelf life. Or even in some cases, evergreen content could be repurposed as LinkedIn articles. And why should you think about LinkedIn articles? Because when you share a link on social media and on LinkedIn in particular, LinkedIn doesn't want people to leave that platform. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn would like people to stay within that platform. So when you share a LinkedIn article, LinkedIn is likelier to show it to more connection of yours simply because it knows they will not leave LinkedIn. They will stay within the gated uh, area of, of LinkedIn. Other than articles and newsletter we, we already discussed, a LinkedIn live event such as this could be excellent for live streamers because it would be on LinkedIn. It could, be, uh, uh, it could, could help you be discovered by people who are on LinkedIn. You could also try to leverage LinkedIn polls. It's tricky, but if you can think of a question that will make your ideal client or ideal prospect feel they need to know the answer, it could be a great way to attract people to you because you cannot see the answers to the poll unless you vote. So the question should be intriguing and you should phrase, try to phrase a question where your audience feels really compelled to go and see whether more, most people think like them or not. LinkedIn events is another uh, um, area you could, you could leverage. Um, uh, uh, virtual uh, conferences uh, you, you would leverage through, through LinkedIn. And even videos, live videos, and even a cover video on, on, your, uh, on your profile. It's free to use. It's very simple. It could be a 20 seconds, uh, 20 second uh, video saying we're we're publishing women in in uh, podcasting. If you'd like, if you'd like to get your copy, just check down below uh, and 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 get your copy from from Amazon. Everything like your your profile, uh -huh. the articles, the newsletter, LinkedIn Live polls, events, panel P. Everything could be part of your LinkedIn strategy. Um, since we talked a little bit about um, events, let's talk more about that. Uh, what what are the best alternatives to face-to-face -to -face networking and other events? Hmm. I think it boils down to understanding that LinkedIn has not changed the way we behave as humans. And social media in general has not really changed the way we are wired. <laughs> And we are wired. Um, uh, there was um, uh, an episode you, you released uh, explaining what a live cast is. And I think it was uh, you, Toby, had mentioned vulnerability. Uh -huh. And it, it, it makes us, you know, afraid because we've, we've spent maybe half our life trying to appear professional and, and everything and, and just not knowing whether our dog will bark or the uh, UPS guy will knock on the door is... is is frightening, mm -hmm. but like you said, people forgive you if they understand that you're human and that you're genuine. And we no longer have to appear, you know, like a, a, a Marvel or DC uh, character. We can be ourselves, and that's actually the best one of the best ways to to attract clients is to be ourselves. If they don't like it, we may not not be interested in working with them. But if I understand how you work, then the time I reach out to you, I would feel that I, I've already almost know you. We've never spoken before, but I heard your voice and I, 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 I consumed a lot of content that you produced. And now I trust you enough to reach out to you and say, help me create that podcast or, or uh, uh, build a better concept for the, for the live stream I'm thinking about. And it's the advice that we give to our clients. Uh, uh, three weeks ago, Shelly and I signed up for a networking event that was taking place 
at a local restaurant and it turned out to be in the corner of the restaurant. We were so, I don't know, ready for human face-to-face -face contact mm -hmm. that we went and I think we stayed there for 10 minutes before we realized this oh. was going to turn into a super spreader event. Like <laughs> we don't want to be here. Uh, and we tell people, you know, there, there's, there is nothing wrong with saying, can we meet you on Zoom? Can we send you an invitation to a meeting? And more and more of our, not only our clients, but our prospects are finding that very accept, acceptable. Nobody can, nobody says anymore, oh, I don't have the equipment or I don't know how to sign on or I don't know how to use it. I think that's become an important part of being able to do uh, business with people and not all live networking events are necessary. Plus it provides you as an individual the opportunity to construct your own networking events, even though everybody's calling in from their respective uh, uh, laptops. So one of the uh, one of the questions, and it's sometimes said jokingly, but other times said seriously, <laughs> we get from our clients is, how do I go viral? Because viral is the new way of getting media attention. And we don't always agree that going viral is a good thing, but I think what they're trying to ask is, how does the media, whether, whether it's print or digital publications, what do I have to do to get their attention? What would you tell them? It's a powerful question. And uh, I think people are obsessed with uh, trying to uh, engineer a viral uh, thing. And, mm -hmm. and, and, but we'll put it aside and I'll, I'll try to, uh, to relate to, to, to what you said. If we are pitching someone who gets dozens or hundreds of pitches a day, an influencer, then my piece of advice would be to customize it as much as we can. And there's someone said, I didn't have to the time to write a short letter. So I wrote a long letter. Our job like 90% of our job is to edit what we wanted. And if I may uh, suggest a um, simple idea, use video. Like tools like Loom or they don't have to be expensive. There's a, even a free version that enables you to have maybe 20 or 25 videos. Mm -hmm. Shooting a 30 second video is likelier to get a response because it makes it more intriguing and we could relate to what you're saying there. But try to make us, make us understand that this video was uniquely created when you research us, when you research that influencer. So you need to like make them think, how does that person know so much about us, so much about my company, so much about me? And try to have a call to action that's easy. Okay, don't ask them something that you can Google. Don't ask them to, to pick up their brains for 10 hours. Try to make it as easy for them to reply. If you get a reply, you're in a good place. And try to nurture that relationship. Don't try to go transactional because they're, we, we smell it a mile away. Uh -huh. That's very true. I do want to mention, since, uh, since Daniel mentioned Loom, I'm getting promotions for another tool called Vouch. Uh, and Vouch is interesting because it's not you producing the 30 to 60 second video. It's you asking your clients to produce a 30 to 60 second video to help promote your business that you then put on the Vouch website and use that link uh, as a way of promoting your business. So you're getting it from the quote, horse's mouth, unquote. So I, I thought it was a good idea. I haven't checked deeply into it, but I thought it was an interesting uh, value proposition. Shall I back to you? I call that UGC. User-generated content. User-generated content, best kind of content. Add to your social proof with G UGC. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about automation. What marketing functions can we automate and how do we do that? Okay, uh, if you allow me to, I'll, I'll, I'll only speak about LinkedIn for, uh, for a second. I don't advise our listeners to use any LinkedIn automation at all for a number of reasons. When you're a solopreneur or when you're a 40 plus entrepreneur, using automation makes no sense because automation is frowned upon by LinkedIn 
and LinkedIn will crack down and might restrict your account. By restricting your account, I mean you will you will no longer be able to perform the actions you'd like to do on LinkedIn. And you might get hurt because you try to save 10 minutes and now you have hours to invest in order to get what you had you know, last, last week. You have a real life network. It may be only around Albuquerque. It may be only around your, your metro area, mm -hmm. but you've gone, you've worked with hundreds of people. You may have served thousands of people. Now, not all of these people are on LinkedIn, but some of them are. Start with the, the basic playground or, or the basic place where you could relate to them as a person. And one quick piece of advice in terms of your connection strategy, pick quality and not quantity. Mm -hmm. If you pick quality and you may connect with 48 people, but you know all of them well, whenever you run a search on LinkedIn, and you find that ideal prospect and you see the mutual the uh, connection of yours and you know who that person is, it's very powerful because you can reach out to them. There is life outside of LinkedIn. Leave LinkedIn, reach out to that person, ask how they've been, and then ask, I, I would like to be in touch with John Doe and I see that you two are connected. Do you feel you feel comfortable enough to make an introduction? Do you know that person well enough? And you can only do that if you really know your network. Maybe down the road, you'll decide to go to the quality aspect of it, to the quantity aspect of it. I'm sorry. But start with quality and then make up your mind. So uh, before I turn this back over to Shelley, I do have a question. I get a lot of requests from people on LinkedIn. I shouldn't say a lot. I get requests from people on LinkedIn who I don't know. Yep. Right. How do I judge whether or not to agree the, to engage with them? Right. My first reaction is I don't know you. Right. And, and I don't respond. Uh, what, what, what do you recommend when it comes to this kind of, when people see those situations that they're getting queries from other individuals, they may not know them, but how do they judge whether or not it's a good decision to incorporate them uh, into their LinkedIn network? Excellent. So I'll make two quick suggestions. One is to simply visit their profiles. And in some cases you will vet either, either decide that it's not relevant for you at all or decide it's, it's intriguing. And if I may suggest another uh, way to do this, is when you go to my network on desktop, you'll see the incoming invitations and look at um, look at this person here, Varun. What I could do is click on see all on the top right uh -huh. and the word message would appear whenever someone sent you an invitation. Hang on, let me here. hang on. Let me let me share that screen. Uh, thank you. There we go. I'm sorry. I was no, all right, go ahead. Cool. So the second on in the top navigation bar, the second from that says my network. Uh -huh. And when you click on see all, it would say CL3 or CL16, doesn't matter. The word message appears. Now, what could you do? You could simply message these people without accepting their invitation. In other words, thank you much, thank you very much for the invitation. I don't remember working with you. Have we met? Is there any way I could be of service to you? Thank you very much, Tony, Toby, Shelly, Lifecast.life. That's it. If that was an automated mechanism, you'll get crickets. Right. But if that person actually wanted to work with you, then they would simply reply. Uh -huh. And then you may actually have a meaningful conversation with them. So one, what, one thing you could do is treat incoming invitation as opportunities and only act when it's intriguing enough for you to spend 30 seconds and email that person or message them on LinkedIn prior to you accepting their invitation. I will take advantage of that uh, recommendation today because I have several of them that I that I really didn't know what to do with. So, um, 
what's one again one of the things that we get from clients is i need more leads how can i use what we do with you to create more leads what would you recommend to an individual to to generate more leads for their business cool it's an excellent question i think when you uh what one of the thing i liked about what is a live casting why should i do it a video it, it, the way you uh, describe both content and campaigns and I, I'd like to be a, a little bit granular and, and speak about the content in the, in the context of, of LinkedIn. Content should not only be shared with your connections. There is a way for you to produce content that's relevant for your audience and join LinkedIn groups. And instead of harassing your own connections, who may not be your ideal prospects, find fish where the fish are and go to these groups and share your educational content there and you may be discovered by 10,000 people you're uh -huh. never going to be connected with simply based on the content you have and in that video I mentioned you have an excellent flowchart with amazing way to repurpose that content uh -huh. so it, I don't think you need to create content for the sake of LinkedIn but if you do create content, then sharing it on LinkedIn makes a lot of sense. And that's one way to, 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 to get leads. The second quick way is to run a search if you know who your, the, your ideal prospect is and focus on what LinkedIn will show you as second degree contacts. If you connected with people you knew well, that means you, you would be able to reach out to someone who will make the introduction. That makes sense if the service you offer is expensive and not a commodity. Because uh -huh. it's worthwhile exploring only if what you, what you sell, what you'd like to offer is, is interesting enough for you to spend that time and reach out to that person. But it's an excellent way to uh, use your, your leverage, your real life network. And I believe referrals, referrals are, are what uh, brings me 90% of, of my clients. Uh -huh. And before reaching out to people you don't know, you need to start with your own backyard. People who've worked with you, people who appreciate you, and people who could refer other clients to you. Um, Bob Berg wrote a number of books uh -huh. about it. Endless referrals is, is just one of them. I could I can't show, show you the, the, the ones I, ha I have on Kindle, but referrals in the long term to me is the best way to get long lasting relationships with clients. Referrals tend to be less price sensitive. They tend to stay with you longer and they could end up referring people to you if you serve them well. Very nice. Shalom. All right. Uh, in your experience, what works best for converting suspects into prospects and then into clients? So we're talking conversion. <laughs> I like the suspects uh, term here. Uh, I'll suggest a, a simple three-step uh, methodology. Question number one, who's your ideal client? Your ideal client could be someone interested in publishing a book or launching their podcast or start starting live streaming. The second question is, what if you were able to attract those people to your own LinkedIn profile? What action would you like those people to perform after they visit your profile? And if you'd like them to reach out to you, then have you provided them with information that is likely to make them convert? And the truth about it is that in many cases, you have that information outside of LinkedIn. So just taking content that you have and repurposing on your LinkedIn profile, maybe it will take you 15 minutes, but it could go a long, long way. Your profile should speak for itself and your, your profile needs to convert. Another misconception some of our listeners may have is that they need to have a LinkedIn page, like a company page. They don't. When they, you know, when they, when they're, uh, if they're, uh, they're uh, uh, a live stream uh, business uh, becomes a, a Fortune 500 company, 
then it may make sense to use the, the page. But if they're solopreneurs or they have a staff of five, 15 people, their individual profiles are likely to have more connections than they page will ever have. So just to uh, reinforce what you just said, I want to make sure our, our uh, listeners understand this. Uh, LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile can be engineered in a very simple way so that it turns into a tool for not only producing leads or suspects to prospects, but it can convert for you, convert for you if you've built it in the right way. Is that, is that correct? That's even better uh, uh, engineered than the way that I said it. Yes. All right. Thank you. Shelley? All right. So let's, um, closing, uh, closing arguments right now. We're going to ask you for your um, most important takeaway tactic or piece of advice for small business owners. And then where people can find you, uh, where's your website, where, where are you on LinkedIn, or, or how, how can they reach out to you? But let's start with that important takeaway tactic or advice that you have. Thank you very much, Shelley. Um, I may surprise you with the answer because what I well, what I say is not related to digital marketing, but I th I think that the best piece of advice I, I could give to anyone who considers becoming an entrepreneur after their twenty or twenty five is to have a meaningful conversation with their significant other before crisis emerge. And in, in many cases, a simple conversation would help people who care about us, understand why we're doing this, and feel reassured that we'll not have to lose our home because of what we're doing now. Maybe we're spending time about it, but you know, you can you can buy a, a blue yeti for for it's it's really nothing. And having that um, trust or that uh, understanding at home is one thing that could help you grow your business for years to come and, and jumping to, to try to do it without making sure that your uh, uh, relationship can overcome obstacles is not a wise idea. And there will be obstacles along the way. So let's talk a little bit. I'm, I'm sorry for doing this. I'm looking up. I'm making sure I have your LinkedIn profile uh, <laughs> here before we go forward. But I want you, if you would, let's share your website. This is where folks can uh, find you. Uh, and also, Shelley asked if you had anything that uh, people could take advantage of and where you give them, uh, you've created content to give them advice about what uh, they should be doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is the uh, my website. It's danielalfon.com, daniel, then A-L-F-O-N.com. And one, uh, the, the most expensive real estate in our profile, the, the, the most expensive real estate in terms of text is our headline. And what I created here is a giveaway, a cheat sheet that's simple with a formula about the way you could craft a selling headline. And that headline is the, the sentence or the couple of words that show up next to your name on LinkedIn. And I, I found that having a strong headline when people search for you or when people visit your website makes them discover you in a more meaningful way. And the, instead of having uh, just the title of your company, if the name of the company is not opening the door, then you could build or craft a more intriguing headline. And the limit here is just ourselves and our mind. And if our listeners spend 10 minutes, like reading this would be five minutes, and then another five minutes to craft a more attractive headline, they could double or triple visits to their profiles via search, and that could help them convert in a meaningful way. Very good advice. So I've posted the link uh, to this page on Daniel's website uh, in the chat room. Please take advantage of that link. 
Uh, and if you go to that page, scroll down, looks like this. Uh, scroll down and you'll see that button for a free download. And that's what Daniel is talking about. In addition to that, I'm going to take the link to Daniel's LinkedIn page, profile page. And I'm going to copy that. I'm also going to post that um, in the chat. Uh, and um, if you're on LinkedIn, um, you know, and you want to learn more about what Daniel is doing to help people take advantage of how they use LinkedIn to build their uh, businesses, uh, connect with Daniel, let him know uh, that you saw him on our program. Uh, and that you were impressed with what he had to say about using LinkedIn. And uh, maybe you'll be fortunate enough for Daniel to respond to you in a nice way. I'm sure he will. All right. So take advantage of, of those if you uh, would, please. Shelly? And those links will also be in the description box and show notes if you uh, are not here with us live. Uh, don't have anything else. Um, today for Daniel to answer. He's been very uh, forthcoming with all of that great information. And again, we're going to be um, transcribing this interview and putting the cogent pieces of information into a book on digital marketing. So look for that coming in the summer of 2022. You just put a deadline on us. Is that <laughs> which, uh, summer of 2022? That's right. All right. Coming up this summer. Uh, before we go, Daniel, any last words for our audience or prospective uh, customers? Uh, for you, actually, for you, Shelly and Toby, I wanted to thank you for allowing me to uh, to be part of, of the journey and tell me tell you how much how significant it is for me. Because if you uh, asked me like six months ago. Would you be willing to go on a live stream event without having it scripted? I would say, get out of here. <laughs> so try to do it. It won't be perfect, but you'll get yourself what you'll get your feet wet, and you'll do it better the second time. There is no other way to do it than try. And and for those of you that are watching us and Daniel right now, and you've ever thought about uh, getting uh, your feet wet, as Daniel said, in live streaming, um, and you have something to talk about when it comes to digital marketing, let us know. It's on that page. I've already posted it, and you can see it in the scroll below. And join us as a guest on our show. Um, we always ask the same set of questions for our digital marketing guests, and we allow them to expand upon those questions in the context of their area of expertise, as Daniel did perfectly today. So join us. And, and as Daniel said, it's a good way to introduce yourself to live streaming. If you need more, learned more, if you need to learn more about it, let us know and we can help you through that as well. It's not hard. And it gives you the opportunity to be real in front of your prospective audience. And that prospective audience is going to hold some prospective business for you. And that's why we recommend it to everyone. And Shelly's the master of taking this content and uh, the, the guru of taking this one piece of content and turning it into literally dozens of uh, different pieces of content that are used in a variety of ways. So. Good advice. Daniel, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to future conversations. And if there's any time you decide to start your own live stream, let us know. <laughs> we'll be happy to join you on that uh, in that conversation as well. Thank you very much. And I look forward to learning from other uh, uh, ex experts in the messages and methods uh, live stream. Thank you very much for this. Thank you, Daniel. Oh, and uh, thank you for joining us at uh, in your time zone. We really appreciate that as well. Thank you for that's the right one there. <laughs> Thank you for joining Messages and Methods Live Cast Life 2.0, hosted by Shelley Carney and Toby Eunice. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question, and we'll consider your ideas for future shows. Share this podcast with your family and friends so they can learn about current digital marketing practices, too. Check the show notes for links and resources, and please come back again next week.